For most people starting out using DSLR or mirrorless cameras, the whole argument of price versus performance is really important when it comes to choosing our hardware. But as we slowly move up through the levels, that argument of price for performance versus nice to haves slowly starts to become more moot. So where does the Ninja 5 land on that scale? Is it a price versus performance king and a necessity for everyone? Or does it fall into a niche group where only a certain few people really need it? Let's find out. Let's start with what the device can do, and it can do a hell of a lot. Atomos has really loaded up the operating system of this external monitor slash recorder, and to be honest, I really don't even know where to start with this one, so I'm gonna start with my favorite things about it. The first of which being SSD media. Sure, SD cards are great, and so are CFast cards. They both bolster amazing read-write performance, and their space and available size is absolutely incredible for what we have available today. I mentioned this in my previous video on the EMR. The idea of losing an SD card is always present in my mind, especially when I'm traveling around for shooting. Am I going to lose a caddy style SSD? Eh, unlikely. But of course you could just be a normal person and be organized with the things that you use. With a six gigabit per second connection, the EMR can record DCI 4K 10-bit log footage straight from the GH4 onto the SSD in my desired codec, DNxHR HQ, which means that I can import it straight onto my drives and into the timeline as soon as I'm finished filming. Of course, shooting straight to DNxHR might not be your style. You might be an Apple editor and prefer to film straight into ProRes, which the Ninja 5 does support. So if you're an Apple fanboy out there, don't worry, they've got your backs. And of course, for whatever lowly reason you would want to film into this, you can film into H.264. Why, why would you ever want to do that? Now going from talking about HQ codecs, I wanna go straight into the fact that the EMR can film log footage, which means that it can display log footage, and it also means that we can load in LUTs to view our log footage, which is literally amazing. You can select the LUT straight out and use it when you're filming to make sure that your colors are on point, to make sure that your exposure ratings are correct, everything like that. It really is a very powerful tool. Going on from that, it has a few key features that I've really come to fall in love with as well. Focus peaking being one of them. Even though the GH4 does support this internally and I still find myself pulling the flip out screen to check focus peaking, I'm starting to wean myself off of that and really appreciate the ability to change the sensitivity and the color of my focus peaking while I'm filming. It is just a godsend. And in this realm is also the zebras that you can enable for exposure. Being able to see what's overexposed and what's not really helps you while you're filming and you can also change the sensitivity on this one too in the settings. And of course, much to my liking as a color aficionado, we have a few graphs that do help us while we're filming certain scenes to distribute our information of color across a graph, whether that be your chromographs or lumosity graphs. There are also a ton of other graphs that I'm not currently using right now, but I'm sure I will get to eventually. But the software that Atomos loaded into the device isn't the only amazing part about it. The construction and I.O. of the device blows me away every time I use it. The solid aluminium constructed body, which means you've got a nice cold metal finish with the black anodized coating over the top of it, makes for a really beautiful looking piece of hardware. We have a HDMI input and output, meaning that you can pass through information through the external recorder while recording. Both of these connections support HDMI 1.2, which means that we can pass through DCI 4K footage, no problems at all. We also have a mic in jack, which supports controlling the audio gain settings, and you can also enable HDMI audio to come into the camera. The display is a five inch 1080p display that can go up to a thousand nits. It's crisp and beautiful, and I love it to death. Any larger and I feel like the weight of the device would probably encounter problems with my hot shoe or ball bearing mount that I use in my different setups. The device also has two one quarter inch female threads on the bottom and top of the device, meaning you can mount it in a very versatile amount of ways. The device also takes Sony NPF batteries, which are very common across the creator space when it comes to videography gear. You can find most of these in your local camera shop. I found a 6,000 milliamp hour one that pretty much lasts me most of my classical shoots, but that depends on the usage and what I'm filming. If you're looking for a more permanent solution, then it actually does come with an AC adapter in box that you can slot into the device and then just plug an AC power adapter right in there. It'll stay powered on if you're in a studio, for example. And of course it takes a SATA data and power connection at the back for the SSD. So taking the software and physical aspects of the device into account, 
What do I personally think of it? If I had to sum it up in one word, I'd probably say educational. The amount of value that this little device has added to my ability to film content is absolutely phenomenal. I feel as if it's allowed me to step up the kind of content that I'm making and I really hope that's reflecting in the type of videos that I'm starting to put out. While I did purchase the unit secondhand for a little bit less than what you'd normally pay, I still feel like if you bought it outright it would add the exact same amount of value. Now if I had to mention one critique it would be the following. I currently don't have a way to show a leveler on my display. I have that ability on the GH4 because I think a gyroscope is mounted in there, but I'm not sure that the Ninja 5 has the same technology. So if you know how to get a leveling tool, like a horizon line thing, then please let me know in the comment section below. And so we're finally brought back to the question that was posed at the beginning of the video. Where does the Ninja 5 sit? Is it a price per performance king or is it a gimmick that really only the high level professional should use? And I'll be 100% honest when I say, it's kind of both. It has different use cases depending on what you want to use it for. If you're a content creator for YouTube, I can totally see how this would add value, like it's added value to my life. If you're an amateur filmmaker just starting to get into that production space, then I'd say go for it. You'll really enhance the quality that you can get out of your camera. If you've got an 8-bit camera that can only support 10-bit recording through a HDMI output like my GH4 does, it's perfect for you. Go out and grab it if you want to really enhance your vlog footage. If you're looking for a fantastic external monitor for a great price, then this device is for you. You can see how this really is a versatile device. It's a jack of all trades and it is a beautiful device to work with. So to conclude, the Ninja 5 can't really be classified into any group as we've just established. I feel like it's just in this space where it's perfect for everyone. To put it simply, the Ninja 5 is just a genuinely fantastic product, which does exactly what it says it's gonna do, and it does it damn well.